Are you tired of the same old sports media? Are you tired of hot takes, arguments, and questions that are just completely off base? Luckily, we have something for you. Touchdowns and tangents of the people, for the people, by people who care about the culture and all its concise commentary. What's good, y'all? Oh, shit. Let me... Uh, Kenneth Barry here. One half touchdowns and tangents. Gonna be a... Uh, how can I just put this? It's going to be... It's going to be a long episode, but it's also going to be somewhat a small one. Uh, might have Pete calling from NABJ out in Florida. But if not, either way, I'm going to be dropping an interview I did with um, Division 2A state champion, Londale Cardinals. Londale High School right down the street from the Good News Sports radio station. Shout out to Good News Sports. Shout out to x Squad Affiliate. Shout out to... Full press coverage, T Biggs, the whole squad, the whole silver and black group chat squad. I, they didn't. That's not our name. I just decided to give us that name. Um, shout out to Pete doing his thing in NABJ 2019 out in Florida, living his best life. Mike Golden, shout out to Intern Serve, uh, doing your thing, planning to lead the country, go off the grid again. But um, yeah, it's gonna be a quick. I'm just going to do a quick recap of the week that has been. Um, You can listen to us on this podcast pretty much anywhere there's like internet connections and Wi-Fi and all that good stuff. So, you know, our TDs underscore tangents, Twitter, Touchdowns and Tangents, Instagram, you'll find us. Just Google Touchdowns and tangents or TDs and tangents and pretty ra- practically almost any variation and you will find us. So, with that, um, I really feel bad for one person in particular, uh, Jermaine Curse. Apparently shattered his leg in a preseason game tonight for the Jets. Yikes. Uh, you never want to see injuries like that. It's pretty horrific. But um, just to touch on a few things, quick things, and then we're gonna—I'm gonna jump straight into the interview because we're already kind of pressed for time. But uh, hard knocks first episode came and went. Raiders, Ron and Ali uh, of you know Last Chance U fame, which by the way I think they picked Delaney College in Oakland to be the uh, the next season. So good for them. You know, it should be interesting. To see how that works. I really think they should do El Camino College next. Definitely going to reach out to their head coach. Uh, it would be really dope for them to just do J- California JUCOs. Because there's, there's a lot there that can be uh, can be addressed. And I also have a TV idea as a spinoff of Last Chance But I'm not going to say it out loud. I'm going to just work on that myself. Figure it out. But hey, whatever. Uh, Duke Johnson finally got traded from the Cleveland Browns to the Houston Texans after the Texans cut Deontay Foreman. Uh, Robert A. Kim Dietschy got picked up by the Miami Dolphins after being cut by the Cardinals. He's on their pup list. T.O. also, Terrell, Terrell Owens, Hall of Famer, he didn't get in until his like, third year on the ballot. It still um, has some resentment and some some ill feelings towards the Hall of Fame for what they did to him and how they did him. So he, again, didn't visit Canton, uh, even though, like, you know, the whole class that went in, they, uh, you know, they went, they showed up for Canton this weekend. Rest in peace to Cliff. Rest in peace to Raider Great. And actually one of my grandfather's favorite players, shout out to my mom for telling me that, Cliff Branch. Um, one of the original deep threats, Big play receiver for the Oakland Raiders, war number 21. Honestly, I wish they would bring that back, but like only for like elite players. Like if Deshaun Jackson were 21, that would be dope. Players like him. Um, but died, I think it was 71, uh, the day after the Hall of Fame ceremonies and all that. Raider, great. Hard Knocks had some, uh, they had an ode to like, you know, the family, the Raiders 
Once a Raider, always a Raider kind of family reunions that they did. It was really nice. They're like no other team in the league does that. It was a beautiful thing, even though the Raiders are moving to Vegas. Still, it's good that they continue that, you know, honor their Oakland roots. It's beautiful. Uh, I think Marshawn Lynch showed up at the Raiders joint practice with the Rams and the Raiders, even though he's a free agent. We're gonna I'm gonna touch on him um cussing at some kids at this camp and then the moms getting mad and pretty much wanting their money back and leaving next week. I wanna wait to hear back from Pete on that. And surf. It'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting conversation. A couple other things I'm gonna red shirt for next week. But uh yeah, Dabo Sweeney said he won't send Kelly Brown a national championship ring because you have to be on the team to get the ring and honestly that was when he's proved he's kind of a piece of shit person. Um, excuse my language. He's kind of proven to be a scumbag in the past with some of his comments about the lack of autonomy he wants college athletes to have and the fact that he did Kelly Bryant really dirty waiting up until his fourth game before he almost ran out of eligibility as a senior to say, you know, we're going to go with Trevor Lawrence. And the fact that he was 16-2 and two as a starter for Clemson, I think it's really... It's really foul. Like, you should have, like, he didn't have to come out and say that, but I think he should have said the brain. What do you know? We got a caller. Hello, caller. State your name and where you're from, please. Uh, this is Pete D. Camarillo. Oh, boy. AKA the Mexican Jim Rome. The Mexican. AKA the co host of Touchdown with Sanders. Oh boy. AKA uh You lit right now. Your 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 girlfriend's favorite PR person. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But what's good man? I'm calling live from Miami. It's actually not stupid humid right now. Um it actually feels pretty nice out here. Uh for once. You last night, dude, at night, I was literally outside sweating. But two nights ago, I was outside sweating, eating some Haitian food. Shout out to Haitian food, man. Not enough people know about it. I understand why 21 Savage was trying to culture vote. Now, nah, like, a, a lot of people know about Haitian food, but a lot of people who don't know about Haitian food don't know about it. Just to clear that up for you. Don't want you to end up like Tupac, you know, talking about Haitians. But yeah. Shout out to the Haitian community. We can't talk about, we, we can't talk about Tupac on this station. We can't talk about Tupac, Tupac, Glasses Malone, or Haitians on this station because I don't want to get run up on by a Haitian. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, explain your experience, man. NABJ 2019, Miami, Florida. Explain it. How, how's everything going down there? Uh, man, so pretty much it's the biggest NABJ ever. 3,000 people, there's uh, like seven other hotels, it's like the 34th anniversary of like the last time they had it in Miami and like the 40th anniversary of NABJ and like some other anniversary but yeah man, you know what it is, the usual shit So it's like the freak nick of journalism events? What? It's like the freak nick of journalism events? But no one here is freaking. I mean, it's cool. Everybody here is friendly. Everyone here is, you know, trying to get on or trying to put people on. So, you know, I definitely appreciate that. And everyone here is, you know, definitely out here hustling and working and trying to make it. So I definitely respect that. But it's also kind of just like a, you know, circle jerk group think and perpetuating the institutions within journalism. But outside of that, man, you know, it's 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 always good to see you know communities that are you know excluded from mainstream society get together and you know celebrate each other and promote each other so it's definitely like it's definitely a positive vibe but you know at the end of the day it's still the journal conference and you know, we're still ignoring the fact that the industry is at its worst point in the past 10 years, at least, part, if not probably ever. But yeah. 
I'll let you know. I mean, this would be cool. I caught up with uh, Mark Gunnell. Shout out to the new show coming up, Mark My Words. Um, he said him and his co-host, some inside information, he said him and his co-host have some real natural chemistry, even though she's like the total opposite of him. She's an older woman, so definitely look out for that. Yeah, opposites attract. Yeah, man. And honestly, man, I don't know. There's a lot of sports people here. Like the Fox Sports did a mock debate thing with like one minute you could debate Fox Sports talent, which is cool and all. But that one was packed out, so I was like, I really don't care. And everybody else here is like interviewing on the spot. So there's actually like a lot of people trying to break into sports media, but it's like, they're all really corny, so shout out to Touchdowns and Tangents for not being corny. Hey. <laughs> self dissing everyone on this call right now. You really are. Like this is a this is a top level smack off call. I'm just letting you go. Outside of that though, I watched HBO Hard Knocks last night. Yeah, I know it's a day late. I'm just glad I even got to watch it because my hotel has HBO as well as the Ocean View Front, Weird Flex. I know. Regardless, <laughs> I watched that HBO shit, and it's like HBO, NFL Network. Can you tokenize Jonathan Avery anymore? Yeah, like, bro, it okay. felt kind of weird. I- a light skin country safety who hits hard. How many times have we seen this narrative? And like, like they, but the old town road playing while they were actually, you know, on horses and holding hands was kind of funny. No, it was like, don't get me wrong. He seems like a good personality. Like there's definitely something there, but you don't have to push it on us. Like, he is the second first round pick on the team. He was the second biggest reach in the first round, and like, but he's what they needed. He plays it, and he's like the second or third best player at his position. So I mean, I get it, but at the same time, it's like just pump the brakes, like relax, like let him come into his own, let him come into that stardom, like. Don't push it upon him. The Raiders have plenty of other stars. Uh, yeah, but, but I was, I was regardless also... of that, the only thing that Hard Knocks made me realize was it was just like, man, I'm watching all this shit, seeing all this shit, watching HBO basically appropriate Raiders culture for the mainstream audiences that it was never intended for. But regardless, just seeing that, seeing all these people that are highlighting, seeing how good the team looks, seeing them kind of come together, and it's like, man, all of this could have happened with Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper on the roster. Yeah. And literally all the people they're highlighting, like, could be on the roster with Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper. Like, bro, you really going to tell me you're going to take Josh Jacobs and – Abrams over Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper. Are you really going to tell me that? Well, we that's a whole nother episode. And I, I, exactly. already, I already explained in my notebook like why the Raiders honestly could have probably had two Super Bowls if you just look at how badly they drafted in the past eight years, which is some of the people they've passed on, just comments and, and you stuff. Mean Del Rio not sitting car in the second half. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Was that too long ago? I mean, you know. Uh, let me move on. Let the Raiders on. passed on David Johnson. Sorry. That's all I'm going to say. They passed I'm, on David Johnson, I'm Tyron to Matthew. I'm trying to and trying to let things go. So, let me just let that go. Yeah, we're trying to be b- bigger, better people. But, yeah. Outside of that, man, I mean, it's been a good week. It's always good to get out here and connect with some cool people. You know, I met some cool people from Philly. Shout out to Philly, man. For some reason, Philly always comes up in this podcast, and I think it's meant to be. Like, yeah, it really is. I feel like be. Philly's like the only East Coast city like I really fuck with. Maybe Miami, like Chicago, 
somewhere in that order, but I think Philly's 